Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all having a great day today. If you are new here, welcome. My name is Rachel and in today's video I'm going to do a full tutorial on how to do a flip cup dirty pour painting. So fluid painting is something that I became deeply in love with a couple years ago. That's the style of painting that I do. Um, a lot of my work, well some of my work is behind me and this specific style that I'm going to show you today is what got me started in the whole fluid painting world. Um, I stumbled upon a random video on YouTube, never heard of this style before, and I just became totally enthralled with it. I watched video after video after video, and I just love it. I love everything about it. It totally speaks to me. Um, it's messy, it's dirty, it's not structured, and that's what I kind of like about it. And as much control as you have as far as mixing things, picking colors, at the end of all of it, you only have so much control because you're not actually using a paintbrush, you're just manipulating the canvas. So um, that's what I love. It makes me crazy sometimes because it doesn't work the way that I always want it to, but in the end it always creates something beautiful. So. I'm going to go through step by step of what I do and how I kind of go through this process. Um, I always, always start with everything that I need in front of me. So I am fortunate enough that I have a room in my house that's designated to my studio. Um, so I have pretty much everything I need right next to me. I always make sure I have all the supplies that I need, whether it's rubber gloves, wooden sticks. I always try to make sure that I have it on hand. Um, this way, it's just super annoying to get in the middle of the process, get all pumped up about it, and then not have something that you need. So um, the only thing I don't have up here is a sink, so I make sure that I have plenty of water on hand. Other than that, everything's good to go. So in my little setup here, I and I also always sit on the floor when I paint. I never paint over a table. Like, this is my spot. So I do have these two little containers, which are just locker bins from the dollar store, and that's what I use to elevate my canvas off of the floor so that the paint can drip off of it. You don't want to have like a crazy amount of excess paint, but you don't want to have not enough either, um, and you certainly don't want it to pool underneath the canvas because it can warp the frame, um, and then it sticks underneath and you got to peel it off and it, it just doesn't look as nice. So I am working with an 11 by 14 canvas. For whatever reason, this was the size that I was initially drawn to when I first started like playing around with this style of painting. There's all sorts of different sizes. You can see all the different sizes behind me as well, but I just like this size. They're, they have squares, they have 10 by 10, 12 by 12, um, but for whatever reason, I'm just drawn to this one. So for this size canvas, these I want to say are seven ounce cups. I don't remember. I've ordered a few over time. Um, but essentially you're gonna need one of these filled with paint to coat an 11 by 14 canvas. So when I do this size, I typically pick three different colors. Today I'm keeping it super, super simple. Um, they always mix really well together. This video is not sponsored um, by Artist Loft, but that is the paint that I'm using. Um, I bought them with my own money. Um, I use them quite a bit. So. I figured I would stick with primary colors because they're the most accessible colors to find at whatever craft store you're going to um, or online, um, but they also mix really well. Sometimes if you're using, say, secondary colors, orange and green or green and purple don't always make the best colors. Um, if done properly, they can be beautiful, but sometimes they get a little funky, murky, and just not cute. So I figured we'd just go super, super simple today for our first one. The red is um, crimson, the yellow is brilliant yellow, and then the blue is brilliant blue. I will link everything that I use as, as long as I can find it all in the description box down below. Um, so if you need a quick reference, you'll have it there. Um, I do also have three stir sticks. Um, I'm using just little wooden craft sticks. You only need one, um, one for each color. There is a fourth cup, and that fourth cup is for the base. I always use a base of white paint, and I don't know why. I don't know if it's just something that I saw in one of the other videos that I watched, um, but I always start with white on the bottom. Now, I use white a lot, so I repurpose this pistachio can um, from Target, and that's where I keep all my white mixed up. I always do a big batch of it because I use it so frequently, so this way it's just easy to, it's just easier. So this I will use, I'll give it a quick stir, 
and I'll put that in one of the cups. You don't need a ton of it. You probably don't need it at all, but I kind of like when the white pulls through a little bit. Sometimes you don't see it at all, but it's just how I do it. So you really only need a very little bit of that in there. So actually, I'll pour that in now just to be done with it. And I'll use a bigger stick. You want to make sure you mix it up really good if you're going to do batches like this because it will, um, like the Floetrol will separate from the water, which is the pouring medium that I used in this one. I do have another container mixed up with um, just white and um, Liquitex, but Liquitex pouring medium I don't always use. So we'll just pour a little in the bottom. I kind of use, I like using these plastic cups because they have little ridges on them. So it's easy to use as a guide. So typically for a white, like the white base, I go a little bit above the crease on the bottom of the cup. It's just like an easy reference point. So I have my colors. I also have Floetrol, which I just put, I have a big gallon of it. I just put it in this little coffee mate container because it's just much easier to handle. Um, this also, when you want to make sure you shake up really good when it sits, it can separate. It will also, um, like around the spout and stuff, there can be, it will like form a solid at some point. And if you get that in your cup and it winds up transferring into the painting, it essentially, for lack of better terms, it looks like a huge snot and it will wind up pulling your paint in the painting. So you want to make sure if you find it falling into your cup, try to get it out before you start mixing and stirring. Otherwise, it can just leave not a very attractive mark. So I have my flow trial ready to go. I also have another jug of water um, and then my silicone. So this is just treadmill oil. You really need any, I mean, any kind of silicone you can find. Um, I got this on Amazon pretty cheap and it lasts you a long time because you don't need a lot of it either. And then gloves. Um, I don't typically wear gloves when I mix the paint, but once I start manipulating the canvas, I do because you are going to make a mess of yourself. So I just don't love having, and my hands are so dry, the paint would never come off. So always, always wear gloves. Plus you don't want the paint sitting on your hands either. So um, I have everything that I need. So what I will start with, um, let's open this up. Nice fresh tube of paint. Also wear clothes, which I mentioned in the last video, wear clothes that you don't mind getting dirty because you will be like, I already have white paint on my hand. Like, I don't know how it happens, but it's going to don't wear nice clothes. You're going to make a mess of yourself. It's totally fine. That's what it's all about. So in the cups. So again, essentially you're going to need to fill a whole one of these cups. So the white cup, you're going to have to fill almost to the top with all of your colors. So essentially all of your color cups, you're going to need about a third of the way full of fully mixed and blended color. So I would say I, I don't measure things. I don't weigh them. I would guesstimate this is probably an ounce. I don't think it's quite two ounces. It's probably an ounce, ounce and a half. But again, I go by the lines in the cup. So it's probably, so the line in the bottom, it's probably that line and then an additional two. So what you're going to do with that, and I will mix all of these right on my canvas because it's going to get paint on it anyways. So um, it's not like, again, with this style of painting, it's going to go everywhere. So the flow trowel is next. I put in about the same. So the amount of paint that you put in is about the amount of flow trowel that I put in. So with that, you're going to want to stir these together really, really well. It may take a minute depending on the type of paint that you're using, but make sure you scrape the sides down, scrape the bottom down. You want to make sure you're getting all of it really well incorporated. Let's see, now I have red paint on me. Um, you're going to make a mess and that's totally fine. So you want to mix it up really well so that you can't see any um, difference between the two products. So it will thin the paint out a little bit, but as you can see, it's still pretty chunky, but the consistency is fine for now. So then what you're going to do is you're going to take water. You're going to add this in slowly. You will need more water than you probably think you need, but add it in a little bit at a time because you can't take it out. You can always add more, but if you wind up with 
paint that's too watery, it's going to wind up combining with your other colors too much and then just create, like it won't stay separate colors. It'll just, it'll make orange or whatever you're doing. So this part, just go a little bit at a time. Again, you can always add more. This takes a little bit longer to stir just because it will separate a little bit and it can get chunky at this point. So you want to make sure, again, you're scraping down the sides, scrape down the bottom. You want to get a really, really well mixed paint and then keep checking the process. So the way that I check to see my consistency and you're going for a consistency of like a heavy cream um, or buttermilk, something um, thin but thicker. So I hold the cup on the side and I almost pick up the paint with the spoon and see how it's not dripping all like in one stream. It means it's not thick enough or thin enough. So just add in a little bit more water and then just keep mixing. And then at some point it may take six different times depending on how nervous you are. Um, it might take a little bit to get the right consistency, but it'll be better if you get it right. So scrape down the sides and then also scrape down your little wooden stick on the side as well because paint will accumulate on there as well. So again, you just want to make sure it's all really well incorporated. All right. And then we'll check that. So that's good. It's all coming off really easily in a nice little amount. So again, that's probably it's in like the second line. So that's a good amount. So we'll stick with that one. Then what we're going to do is we're going to take the silicone and you don't have to use this. I love cells in these dirty pores. So I always use it. Um, and you don't have to add it to all the colors. You don't add it to the white base. Um, but I just use in this size painting, I'll just do three drops per color. You can either stir it around a lot or you can just do like a quick stir that will affect how it comes through in the painting. I usually stir it, I don't know, six or seven times and then call it a day. So I will very quickly do my yellow and blue and then we will keep moving. Okay guys, so everything is all mixed and ready to go. I have the camera zoomed in so that you can see more of the painting, less of me. Um, so again, when, and this all has, they all have the silicone in. So again, this is the consistency you're looking for. You want it to run off smoothly. Um, again, not like super watery. It's probably kind of hard to tell, but um, you'll know it when you see it. So with the white again i pour everything right on top of the canvas because it's going to get full of paint anyways with these colors i'm going to do i'm gonna layer red yellow blue red yellow blue um, i typically try to do three layers of whatever pattern i'm doing so again you're gonna want to get pretty close to the top of this cup you want to leave a little bit of room because if you go all the way to the top Flipping it is going to be a disaster, but also um, if once you get it onto the canvas, the paint will kind of hover, or not the paint, but like the cup will hover on top of the paint and it just doesn't work as well. So I usually leave the sticks right in the cup and you're just going to layer them back and forth. The paint will wind up sinking into um, the colors before. And that's totally okay because again, they're going to blend anyways. So again, you're just going to do layers. You can add as much or as little as you want, like per layer. Um, I typically use again, the sides of the cups as my guide, um, for how much is going in. 
So we'll start again. So we'll hit that line and then we'll go back with the yellow. I love, love watching the paints develop in the cup as I'm pouring it. It just, it looks so cool and gives you an idea of, you know, kind of what's going to happen. So these last three are going to be, all right, the last, and then when you get to the last, you're going to want to scrape down the sides of the cup to get all the paint in there. Cause again, you want to use as much as you have, cause we want to get as close to the top of that cup as possible. Then I just put this over to the side so I don't wind up knocking it over. Put the rest of the yellow in. And then the rest of the blue. This is actually going to take me right where I want it to be. So that was perfect. All right. So now I will see, I have paint all over my hands already. So I will take this and show you what it looks like. So it's kind of hard to see, but you can see it's layered and you can see it's starting to mix on the side. And those are like creating their own cells almost. It's hard to see, well, it's kind of hard to see on the top because it does, once you get closer to the top, it will start to layer in like one, um, it sits on top of the other paint. So for the next part, what you're, you can do this a couple different ways. You can take the cup and flip it directly over the canvas. I caution with that though, because when you do that, you're likely to spill a lot of it which is fine as long as you get it on the canvas. But I find an easier way is to pick up the cup, pick up the canvas, put the canvas on top of the cup and then flip it over. And then this way you're not getting paint all over the place. Now I usually let this sit here for about 30 seconds or so, just so that the paint can start to come down the sides of the cup. Um, and start to pour out of it. Now the next part is, this is definitely when you're gonna wanna put your gloves on because this is when it really, really gets messy. So what you're gonna do, you can pick up the cup two different ways. You can just pick it straight up, or what I do, which you have to be careful of, take the cup and you push it with it staying directly on top of the canvas and then you pull it back and allow the paint to disperse. Um, it is a little bit more difficult to do that because you have to make sure that you don't release it too close to the corner because if you do, it's all going to fall over the edge. You have to, I get, well, I'll just show you, I guess it'll be easier. So hold it down, pull, and then slowly pull back. Now, what I always do is put the cup at the corner of the um, canvas where it doesn't have a lot of paint. Now you can already start to see all those circles. Those are cells. So you can slowly see them start to develop. And I love that because it just kind of gives you a glimpse as to what's going to happen. And I also love, which I'll show you, the inside of the cup. I absolutely love the way that it looks. I usually let the paint sit there for a minute. I don't know if it'll zoom in or um, focus. But it looks so... Oh, it's not going to do it. There we go. It just looks so cool inside of the cup from the silicone. It's so cool. So again, I usually let it sit here for a minute or so and kind of disperse on its own. Let's move these out of the way. Um, but then what will happen is I start to game plan where I'm going to start shifting the paint. 
So this side has it almost to the edge where I still need to cover quite a bit over here and over here as well. So typically what I do is I'll rotate the canvas to pull down in this area and then swing back around so that I'm getting the areas with um, the least amount of paint first or the more bare area and then I'll go back and fill in the rest of the parts. So this also I would recommend you do pretty slowly because if you wind up going too quick you're going to dump a ton of the paint off the side and you can't get it back. So what I will do, I'll try to do this closer. So I will go down here, oh sorry I'm not even in focus or in the picture. <laughs> so go down here first and again do it slow, try to get as close as you can and then pull back because at the end you're going to have a good amount on the canvas where you can let it flow off freely. So we got to get this corner and then now it's okay to start letting it drip off because and you can use your thumb to help guide on the corners. The corners are the most difficult spot to um, have paint reach which is not a problem I'll show you what I do afterwards so you just sorry you guys they keep going out of focus it's hard to do two things at once so you want to go and get this corner and you can let it kind of pour off use your hand and then go back around want to go get that corner again So now we can go through and let it coat the rest. It stinks sometimes because you'll find parts that you really like that you don't want to lose that you wind up losing. So I am happy with that. So I'm going to rest it on my little stand. So now where you have areas, specifically the corners, where you are lacking um, paint, which this corner you can see doesn't have paint right here. I just take my finger and I dip it in the paint that spilled off and I just touch it up. And then, see I just stuck my arm in the paint too. I swear I cannot do this without getting paint all over myself. So you just want to touch up the edges and that's it. So I will take the camera down to do a close-up and show you guys what it looks like up close. So we don't have a ton of paint on the ground, which is good. Um, and what I do also, which sometimes they create really cool spots, um, when the paint dries off this plastic tablecloth I have on the ground, you can peel it up and they call them skins and you can create like magnets, keychains. people do all sorts of fun stuff with it. So I'm going to try to not drop my camera in the paint. So you can see that right there is the only spot on the whole painting that a white, the white came through. And I actually love it because you can actually see other colors behind it. So I'm pretty pleased with this. I'm trying to... My camera is on my tripod. <laughs> it's hard to... Here we go. It turned out pretty cool. I'm happy with it. And that's the thing, like we use just basic primary colors and you can still see a lot of the red, the yellow, and the blue, but you also have a ton of green, some turquoise, not a ton of orange, but there's sometimes using, we, I can do this painting exactly the same and it will look totally different. So you really just don't know until you play around with it. So what I'll do, this will probably take, oh, probably a day or so to dry. Oop. 
So what I'll do is I'll let this dry for a little bit and then I will come back and show you what it looks like when it's all done. Okay guys, so it's the next day. It's about 10 o'clock in the morning. It's still a little wet. If I would have waited till later today, it would have been totally dry, but I never said I had patience. So, um, I love how it turned out. I think using primary colors, I'm surprised that we really only had one new color come through. Um, I like how a little bit of the white stayed in. I like how you can see some of the colors underneath it. I like the amount of cells that we got. Um, I'm overall pretty pleased with this. Um, yeah, I'm digging it. The cool thing is if you, if I would have done this, like the exact same process yesterday, but two different canvases, same layering technique, same colors. The other one would have turned out totally different than this one. So if you guys want to see me do something like that, um, leave that in the comment section. Um, and then any other videos you guys want me to do, let me know if you have different colors you want to see, you know, different techniques, whether it's a ring pour, dirty pour, um, putting one through a strainer, which I've never done before. Um, I love to have fun and experiment. So leave me comments and I will make more videos. If you like this one, please give it a thumbs up. It really helps support my channel. Um, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please do so. I have a few different topics. Art is going to be a big one now, um, but also, you know, my continuing cancer journey and becoming a mom to little Xavier. So and we got a lot of other really crazy things happening in our lives too, which I'll do another video on shortly. But um, again, if you liked it, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, hit the bell notification so you can hear when I have new uploads. And I hope you guys all have an awesome day. Enjoy. Until next time. Bye.